Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope, and welcome to Hashtag Giving Tuesday here at Hope Heals International Ministry. In the U.S., it's December 1st, so I'm not losing my mind. Uh, we celebrated Hashtag Giving Tuesday yesterday here in the Philippines, but because we have a large audience in the United States and around the West, we are celebrating Hashtag Giving Tuesday twice. So welcome, everybody. I'm Chaplain Bob, and you're watching The Daily Dose of Hope. The Daily Dose of Hope is a place where you can come on a daily basis to listen to God's Word, to participate in God's Word, and receive the hope that God has for you in His book called the Holy Bible. Now, that Bible is made up of 66 books, 39 of them are in the Old Testament, 27 are in the New Testament, and together it's like a love letter to you. It's God's way of speaking to you directly. Now, here on the Daily Dose of Hope, we use only God's Word. Uh, we do not use self-help books. We're not using any um, kind of concordances and things like that. We're just defining God's Word with God's Word. And we always tell you what translation we use. We never keep that from you because I think that's important. Um, because just the other day I was confronted with somebody that, um, with a group that is considered a heretical group, which means that they're preaching a false gospel. And um, it uh, became very apparent when I looked into their information and they had their own Bible translation, which is always a big red flag. So, anyways, without further ado, let's pray, and then let's open our Bibles. Today, we are going to have a, um, a little bit of advice from God. That's right. Um, we're going to take some time today and consider His Word. Um, it's, up, it's coming along the bottom of the screen. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, and I'm calling this Godly Advice. Okay, let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We thank you and praise you for your grace. We thank you and praise you for your love and your kindness. Lord, we thank you for being a father that's above all other fathers. There's no other God beside you, Lord. You're the one and only true God. You're maker of everything, Lord. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for helping us to understand your word today by sending the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to help us to unpack, help us to understand what it is that you have for us today that you want us to learn in 1 Tim Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. We thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth soon in a few days, about 22 days, 23 days. We're going to be celebrating Christmas. And your Son, Jesus Christ, was born here as a Savior for all. And as we look at that this month, Lord, let us not lose sight of the fact, um, you know, being wrapped up in materialism, but help us to be focused on your son and what your son offers to us. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. So, again, happy hashtag Giving Tuesday, and let's open our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to put up my electronic Bible up on the screen. Uh, of course, I'm not on the right screen. There we go. Now I am. I'm on the correct screen. It'll pop up any second now. There it is. Okay. Hope Heals International Ministry. Again, we're celebrating hashtag Giving Tuesday. I'll put this up at the end of the, the broadcast, but these are some ways that you can give. If you've been on, uh, if you go to Hope Heals Ministry on Facebook and search it, you'll get the Daily Dose of Hope. And you can also um, interact with us there and send us messages. So I'm not going to spend much time there. This isn't a commercial. This is a time to study God's word. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. First, I tell you to pray for all people, asking God for what they need and being thankful to him. Verse 2, pray for rulers, pray for all who have authority, so that we can have quiet and peaceful lives full of worship and respect for God. Verse 3, important verse, this is good and it pleases God our Savior. So if you've ever wondered to yourself, what, uh, what really pleases God? You know, the question is, what really pleases God is found in the Bible. You want to know what that is, you have to open your Bible. 
Um, I just got uh, finished just before I went live here. Uh, and, and by the way, you may be watching on Facebook, you may be watching on a watch party, you may be watching on, on YouTube or other social media. Everybody's welcome here. But I just came on live a little bit ago, and I just came from a Bible study where we were talking about prayer, okay? And one of the things that was interesting to me in this Bible study is that the author of this study that we were using um, gave us many ways that we can pray and gave us different techniques that we should employ so that prayer becomes a constant in our life. It becomes normal in our life. It becomes a, um, a habit for our life, okay? Now, First Timothy here, the writer here, says, First, I tell you to pray for all people. Notice there, this is in the NCV, the New Century Version uh, translation. He says, pray for all people. Don't pray for just the people that love you. Don't pray just for the people that um, you like. Uh, he's saying here, pray for all people. Pray for your enemies, right? Pray for those people that harmed you. Pray for those people that you are having a difficulty right now getting along with. Pray for all those people in your life that are the ones that maybe during the holidays um, you want to avoid, right? There's always somebody at a Christmas get-together or a New Year's get-together that you seem that uh, you see them at the, the get-together or the party, the fa family gathering, and you have to be um, very careful because you don't want to be around them. <laughs> There's always a difficult person in the family. So, God is telling us, this is godly advice, he's telling us, first, I tell you to pray for all people, okay? Asking, now what are we supposed to ask for? Asking God for what they need and being thankful to him. Now, this is where God knows everything. Okay, you've heard this said many, many times uh, in churches and from the pulpit, God knows everything that you need before you even ask. So when you pray for other people, you don't necessarily have to ask them uh, for the prayer requests that they have. Like, for example, if you're at your Christmas party at work and you're sitting there maybe with uh, 10 or 12 people or more, you don't have to go around the room and say, guys, I'm getting ready to pray for all of you. So I need everybody's prayer requests. Can you let's go one by one? OK. You don't have to do that. Uh, God here, through, through the writer here in 1 Timothy says, asking God for what they need, God knows what they need. So it's simple. I, what I do sometimes when I don't know somebody, uh, their prayer request, uh, they say, you know, Chaplain Bob, would you pray for me? I just say, Lord, you know exactly what it is that they need on, in their life right now. You know exactly what their circumstance is. Lord, I'm praying for favor for them, Lord. I'm praying that you comfort them through this prayer request. I use language like that because I know that if I start guessing um, what it is that they need, you know what that, that turns out to be? That turns out to be almost like I'm judging them. Like, you know, I, I'm trying to predict what their life is like. Do you ever do that? I think on social media, that's very easy to do. We look at people's, um, you know, we look at their timeline on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever social media we like to use, and we say, oh my gosh, look at this, what this person posted. They must really be in difficult times, especially if they're reposting something, right? We have no idea. We have no idea what people are going through. And social media is not a good place to try to predict what people are going through. So God very simply says, asking God for what they need and being thankful to him. Did you know it's important for us, we've been preaching on this recently, it's important for us to thank God in advance for answered prayer. Lord, I'm going to thank you in advance for bringing us a new sponsor or a new supporter. Lord, I'm going to thank you in advance for answering this prayer request for the promotion at my job. 
It's good to be thankful and thank God for what he's doing. You don't know anybody else in the universe that can answer a prayer for you. Only God can answer a prayer request for you. So why not be thankful? Why not honor him by saying, Lord, I'm thankful that you're my father in heaven and that you have the power. Acknowledge his power and his sovereignty. We've been preaching the last couple of days about sovereignty. Acknowledge his sovereignty. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for your sovereignty, that you're never surprised by anything. And that you're always faithful and you're always good. Let's go to verse 2. Some more godly advice for you. Pray for rulers. That means pray for the government. Pray for the people who are in places of authority. It says pray for the rulers and for all who have authority. That's your boss. Um, that's your husband, if, if you're a woman. <laughs> she has authority, or he has authority over you, uh, biblically speaking. Um, if, you're a, if you're a son or a daughter, or a brother or sister, there are people in your family that have authority over you. Pray for them. Um, if you're a, a, a worker, obviously it's your manager, or your boss, or your supervisor. Pray for them. So pray for the rulers and pray for all who have authority so that we can have quiet and peaceful lives full of worship and respect for God. So God starts off in the first verse and he says, pray for everyone. Pray for your enemies. Pray for the people that have hurt you. Pray for the people that have burned you. Pray for the people that you love. Pray for the people that love you. And then he gets specific in verse 2, and he says, pray for your government. Uh, do I love my government, every, everything about my government? No, but that's not the point. The point is we pray for them because God ultimately has sovereignty over them. Ask God for things that you want the rulers to do or consider. You know, when I, when I think um, a ruler, quote-unquote, a government official doesn't know Jesus, that's just me predicting again, and that's dangerous, of course. But when I think a, a government official doesn't know Jesus, I pray that, that their heart would be softened. I pray for the Holy Spirit to soften and prepare their heart for Jesus Christ. I don't brag about it. I don't walk around and tell everybody about it. I don't gossip or me about it. I just do it. So that we can have quiet and peaceful lives full of worship and respect for God. One of the reasons that we pray to God for our elected officials and for all those that have authority in our life is so that we can have respect for God. What's this respect factor for God? It just means that you put God at the very top. God is sovereign. He's over all of this. Nothing surprises God. Nothing catches God off guard. Nothing that your boss will do, nothing that the government will do, nothing, absolutely nothing. God already wrote the history. He knows everything that's going to happen. But one of the reasons that we pray for these rulers or these people in our lives that are in authority positions is we want to show respect for the sovereign God that we serve. See, when you write a letter or you make a phone call to a senator or a representative or to your mayor, or you write a note to your boss, and you don't include God, what you're basically doing is you're disrespecting God. Because God is in control of all of these things. He's sovereign. So allow him to be included in your prayers for rulers and people of authority. And when I do that, I don't have to say, Lord, you're included. I can just say, Lord, I'm asking you to do things for these rulers or these people of authority in my life. You're submitting to him. Does that make sense? Now, here's the punchline. Verse 3, super important verse. This is good. So when you do these things, when you pray for everyone, you pray for the rulers and the authorities in your life, the writer here says, this is good. Don't you want to do good things in your life? 
Don't you want to be known as doing something that's biblically good? This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior. Okay? So God is pleased when we pray for everyone. God's pleased when we pray for people that are in positions of authority. God's pleased when we, when we pray for the government officials. And one of the reasons that um, God is pleased is because he enjoys hearing from you. He enjoys spending time with you. He enjoys your submission to him or your humility before him. It's a way for you to be connected with him, yes, but it's also a way for you to show God, you're God, and I'm not. How many of us try to play God in our prayer requests? We hold back prayer requests because we think, you know what, I, I got this. I'm not going to bother God with this, this particular request. I'll take care of it on my own. If that's part of your thinking, be careful. Be very careful. Because you're probably in for something that's not going to go very well. Because you haven't, you haven't included the creator. You haven't included the one and only God. And that's dangerous. So submit yourself before God. Now what's not mentioned here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this passage that we're looking at, is we are not mentioned anywhere here is to ask God for his will. So important for us to remember, God, what's your will in this? When I pray for everybody, for these people I don't really know or I can't ask them their specific prayer requests, what's your will for their life? For the government official, President Duterte here in the Philippines, you don't know him. Maybe some of you do that are watching, but most of you don't know him personally, so you have no idea what he needs specifically. So when you pray, you're saying, Lord, what is your will for President Duterte's life or his decision-making or his leadership? And when you do this, when you submit yourself to God and you pray for other people and people in authority, this is good. And it pleases God, our Savior. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, thank you and praise you for your words in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Lord, we can take this, put it in our pocket right now, and walk around with it for the day, knowing that you will hear our prayer requests for other people, Lord, and that it is good for us to pray for other people, and that it does please you, Lord, and we want to please you with our lives. Lord, help us to bring glory to you through our lives. We thank you and praise you for hearing our prayer requests for ourselves as well, Lord, and help us to seek your will in all of our prayer requests and all of our petitions. Lord, we also want to ask you to consider our sins right now. Lord, I'm going to use 1 John 1, 9, which I love to do. 1 John 1, 9 says, If I confess my sins, I know, Lord, that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for that promise. We love you. We praise your holy name, Lord. And it's in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name, that we pray all of this. Amen. By the way, at the end of this verse right here, uh, this, this is good and it pleases God, our Savior. The Savior is Jesus Christ. God, our Savior, is Jesus Christ. So God is made up of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? And we know here for a fact that God, our Savior, is Jesus Christ. So actually, you're pleasing Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, I told you I promised you I'd put up on the screen ways that you can interact and you can help on giving, hashtag Giving Tuesday. We like to use Zelle and Venmo. We suggest that um, for U.S. Uh, people that are from the United States that want to give and want to help. You can click on there and go to dunkball at yahoo.com. You can give whatever amount you want. I don't get involved with that, whatever frequency you want. We are soon going to be launching our website, our Hope Heals International website. So you'll be able to also click on there, but that's not available yet. Um, we want to thank you for interacting with us. Ways that you can get a hold of us or way that you can interact 
Go to Hope Heals Ministry on Facebook and you'll see the Daily Dose of Hope page. Go on there and give us a like and follow us on there. Also, go to our our YouTube page at Hope Heals International Ministry and subscribe to our uh, YouTube page. We're uploading content every day and soon that's where all of our content will be. Uh, It's a safe place for us to go. It's easy for you to share with other people. And um, we love it because other people can, uh, that we don't know can have access to it. So once again, we want to thank you for your attention and we want to thank you for your participation today. God bless all of you here on Giving Tuesday. And um, thank you for praying for me and my wife, Marianne, and my son, Andre. Thank you for praying for our ministry. Uh, we we uh, honestly, we really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And God bless all of you. I really, truly mean that. God bless all of you. Take care, everybody.